there are a number of exceptional places. Whether historical, strange or unique, these help to create the area's identity. On South Sea's sunny seafront, there's a pretty spot with some compelling history. Next to the Canoe Lake in South Sea is a rose garden, hidden behind the large walls of the dismantled Lump's Fort. Lump's Fort was a disused fortification built on Port Sea Island as a part of the defences for the naval base in Portsmouth. The original Lump's Fort was constructed in the early 19th century, but by 1827 part of the structure had fallen into the sea. The fort was rebuilt in the 1860s and acted as part of the Portsmouth Harbour defence in the First World War. The fort was brought by the city in 1932. The fortified walls remain, as well as a few mounts for defensive guns. These days, however, the fort is better known for being the home of South Sea Rose Garden. The Rose Garden also contains what seems to be the only clue that Portsmouth is twinned with the city of Missouri in Japan. A small wooden archway takes you to the Japanese Zen Garden. The Japanese Zen Garden, a recent addition, has a small ornamental bridge and oriental reeds. In bloom, the garden is stunning and is said to have up to 40 varieties of roses on display. At the end of Chalk Pit Road in Pools Grove, there's an area of rocky grassland which runs the length of Pools Grove Chalk Pit. During the Second World War, the underground network of Fort Southwick on Portsdown Hill was used as the headquarters for Operation Overlord, or D-Day. There are two tunnels clearly visible about a third of the way up the chalk face. At what was at the bottom of the quarry face, a tunnel was dug into the chalk to act as a radio station, sending and receiving secret information which was scrambled in case of interception. The Hill Sea Lines were military fortifications built on the northern bank of Port Sea Island to protect against the attack from the mainland. Hill Sea Lines Ranger Peter Roberts explained further the history behind the area. I give a number of talks to various groups and quite often they come up to me and say I've lived in Cosham, I've lived in Portsmouth all my life and didn't know it was there. But if somebody attacked Portsmouth they couldn't actually attack from the seaside because you've got the ships there and you've got all the fortifications but they could actually land on the beach further up. Normally people said Selsey and they could actually walk around and attack Portsmouth from the landward side. So they actually decided to defend Portsmouth from, from the creek at the top of the island. Originally the first fort was actually the far side of the um, Port Sea Creek, so it would be on the north side, and actually defended the bridge that actually came across. That was in the 1500s. Later on they decided to actually use the creek itself as part of the defence, so it's like a moat. So they moved the fort from the north side to the south side of the creek. What you actually see now is about fourth or fifth generation of defences. What usually happened when there was possibility of an attack, they built the forts up. When there wasn't a possibility of attack, they fell down. Part of my job is to actually promote the site. So we're actually opening it up for people to use, so we're doing paths and the wildlife, and at the same time promote it to other people so they can actually come up and use the site. It's actually very diverse wildlife here. There's a couple of species that are what called red letter species, i.e. quite rare, and other species which are actually quite common, but considering you're in the middle of a city, you've got the woodland here, you've got the wetland here, it's an ideal place for people to come and actually see a bit of wildlife which they're not going to see around the concrete jungle. <laughs> 